this game, you die, and you die lots, so if you don't want to die fast, it helps to know how to play, or even what the game is. First of all, I'm only going to cover general stuff rather than strategies. Since this game is often updated and the updates it can get dramatically change everything. You already know the movement controls, but did you know that you could walk with C and not make a sound? You probably knew that you could run with shift, that is important. You will also need to access your inventory with tab, probably at the same time, so turn off steam overlay. Pressing E on doors will open them, but more importantly, it closes them too. And I know that there's a button on the side, but you can click on the door model and it works too. It's, it's easier to do when you're running from something. Sometimes the door won't open, and that's because it needs a key card, which you need to hold in your hand, which you would do by right-clicking on it in your inventory if there is a card in your inventory. Left-clicking, that is. If you right-click, it's just gonna land on the floor. Don't do that. Not right now. Not until you're in this room and this machine on this side. Because this machine in this room, 914, is an upgrade room, and you will need to upgrade stuff, probably. Here's a basic rundown on what's happening. We got some paranormal entities stored in a private underground facility being researched that have broken out of their containment. They're called SCPs. They want to kill everybody and they're good at doing that. The facility is on lockdown and needs to be evacuated. The SCPs need to be recontained as well. There are five different roles that you can spawn as in this game. The D-Class and the scientists are stuck in light containment and need to find a way out. Once the D-Class escape, they become chaos. Once the scientists escape, they become MTF. The MTF are the cleanup crew for a containment breach. They want to eliminate the SCPs in the D-Class and help the scientists to escape to the surface. The Chaos Insurgents is the cleanup cleanup crew, with the intention of wiping out the MTF and the scientists and rescuing the D-Class. They obviously should worry about the SCPs, but they can succeed without killing them. Some servers allow you to cross team rescue scientists or D-Class if they escape while detained, which is done with a disarmer. Most servers are community hosted, so you should check their rules before connecting. Lastly, the SCPs of course need to eliminate all facility personnel, including MTF if any remain. Let's go over the SCPs as they typically control the nature of most matches. SCP-173, the YouTube thumbnail SCP. You know him. 173 doesn't move when you're looking at him, so be sure to do that. But they do move every few seconds, because that's when everybody blinks simultaneously. Tips for being 173, don't walk into a place with a lot of guns. You will die. SCP-096, he is sad all the time, especially if you are looking at him. So if he's hanging out with 173, you'd better watch out. When you look at him, he screams and then he runs. And if you're playing as 96, you press E to break doors while you're running around. If you happen to not be 96 and you trigger his panic time, it's really just a better idea to try and hide than run, because you, you're not gonna run away. SCP-049 This guy doesn't like being shot a lot, but he's very good at making friends, and friendship is power or something, I think. Hold E after a fresh kill to turn your kill into a zombie. It must be fresh, and it must be yours. If SCP-049 kills you, be ready to play for the bad guys. You're becoming a zombie, don't be angry. SCP-106 is a big deal. He can walk through any passable door and set a warp point from his inventory. You can't kill him very quickly either. When he gets you, you go to the pocket dimension. You die here, unless you don't, in which case you may end up near his containment. And if you can get in here, which you need a maximum containment access keycard for, get someone to step in here. Quick note, they will die. And then press this big red button. You'll hear screaming over the intercoms and then 106 will be dead. SCP-939 can spawn twice or something like that, because I guess there are two of them in the SCP lore. They are dinosaurs, I guess, who, besides using Q for general voice chat, like everybody does, they can also use V to talk, because SCPs can't really talk to other players, but 939 can. Uh, pizza here. No. I didn't order any pizza. Hi. Bye. <laughs> 939 is fast and moves faster while taking damage, so watch out for your slower friends. Being slow isn't that bad of an idea, actually, because 939 is sort of blind, and he can only see players when they're running or making sound. If you're playing as somebody who needs to escape, here's the deal. You are in light containment and must travel up into heavy containment and pass the entrance zone to either gate A or B, which takes you to another elevator that takes you to the surface. 
The surface is the same every match, but the rest of the map is randomly generated. When you get to the surface, then you can escape. You need to get past the checkpoint door to go to heavy, another checkpoint to go to the easy, and a gate to get to the surface. You will not spawn with a checkpoint card, and will need to find one, or more likely make one. You also need gate access, of course. The card will tell you what it does when you look at it in your inventory. You make good cards by finding bad cards and dropping them in SCP-914. 914 can upgrade or downgrade cards, as well as guns, if you happen to have them for some reason. There are five settings and an activation button. The core setting will destroy stuff, rough will make it worse, one to one will trade your item for something of equal value, like giving up a containment access card for an armory access card. That's if you're more interested in guns than 106's room or the nuke, something I will talk about later. Fine is the upgrade setting. You typically always use that. You don't use very fine. That's kind of like, a, I think it's like a gamble upgrade setting. You might upgrade really fast, but you might also destroy the item entirely. And if you don't have a card and the door to 914 is closed, you're stuck in there until something comes to find you or kill you. This is subject to change, but this is what the card spectrum looks like right now. Study it if you want, but all you really need to know is that once you get to this card or this card, then you can escape. You can go further if you want, but 914 is a good place to find people to kill, so you can't stay here forever. Even if nobody comes for you, light containment gets decontaminated in 15 minutes after the game starts, which means everybody dies and you can't come back here. Some servers turn this off, so you don't always have to worry about it. If you picked up a weapon here somehow, then here's the weapon spectrum as it is right now. By the way, if you happen to pick up one of these iPad thingers and you get to a workstation, you can customize the attachments your weapon has. And uh, those attachments save to your client, so you only have to do it once, and it will always... You can pick up a stranger's gun and it will have your stuff on it. Moving on to the rescue teams, as MTF you spawn with these guns near the escape zone on the surface. Except for the facility guard which act as the first wave of MTF, it's weaker but they spawn in the easy. By the way, if you die, there's a good chance you'll respawn as a part of the next wave of a rescue team so don't, don't complain too much when you're dead. When you spawn as the MTF, you'll get those tablet things I was talking about. Maybe a flash grenade and always a radio. When the radio is in hand, you can turn it on by right-clicking and changing the range with left-click. Know that you do not need to have the radio in hand for you to speak with it. The Chaos Insurgents will typically spawn later and less frequently, and they get this gun. It has bad range compared to the other weapons, but the best damage. They have the simplest job, second to the SCPs. All Chaos and most MTF have access to the gates, but they will not have good enough cards for the highest containment or armories. The reason it is good to have maximum level cards, other than dealing with 106, is because armory access can get better weapons into your hands and activate the nuke. Because killing SCPs is hard, there needs to be a couple other means of beating them. If you find the micro, it's in heavy. It is made specifically for dealing a large chunk of damage to SCPs, or if they're close enough, finishing them off. You need at least a commander card to get it. It takes 10 seconds to charge and has short range, and you can only fire it once, so it's a good idea to be smart with it. 173 will definitely be capable of killing you or maybe fleeing if you approach them with it. 096 will probably panic and be forced to take the hit in their freakout animation, but if you don't kill them, you're dead. 049 might kill you, but you're faster than them, and they are the least likely to survive. 49's the best to use the micro. 106 will probably survive the micro and is more likely to teleport away. Don't use the micro on 106. 939 isn't a good idea either. They... they... They will get you. The micro isn't the most effective way of defeating SCPs though. In heavy containment there's an elevator that takes you to the warhead silo. If you pull this lever down the nuke will be active. You can't start it down here but once you go up to the surface there's a room which does need a max containment card in order to be opened. And once inside you can use the card to expose the nuke start button. Once the nuke starts all doors are opened and cannot be closed. You have 90 seconds to escape or disable the nuke, which has to be done by lifting the lever and pressing the red button back in the warhead silo. If the nuke is started up again, the time will be less than 90 seconds. Once the time is up, access to the underground is cut off and everything in the easy, heavier light will die. This normally marks the end of a round. With that, you should know just about everything you need to know to jump in. This game is fun, and I hope the player base can grow. It may lack some polish, and when it has bugs, it can be pretty rough, but this is the kind of game that you can tell unique stories about, and I think that's what makes a good game. Anyways, it's a free game on Steam. Go get it before it dies and 
Remember to turn off the steam overlay.